Narcissist Seduction Episode 11 Ian Wynn had left the office early to ensure that his home was tidy. In truth, he kept it well presented, and there was little for him to do. He sat on the edge of his bed and wondered whether tonight was when he would become even closer to Ashley by taking her to his bed. He had purposely shown restraint so far. He liked to think that he was a gentleman at the appropriate times. But when the shackles were taken off, well, the beast had to be unleashed. Nevertheless, Ashley seemed to have formed a belief that he was something of a ladies' man, and accordingly, by not demonstrating any pressure whatsoever to progress the physical aspect between them, he hoped to disavow her of this notion. As usual, they had exchanged messages throughout the course of the day. He had been driving back to his house when a further message had arrived from her. Don't know what it is, but feel down all of a sudden. Kiss, kiss, kiss. He had been driving, and therefore was unable to reply. He had toyed with finding a spot to pull over, and answer or ring her. But her comment had made him feel uneasy. Why was she feeling down? She was driving back from her meeting to the south to see him. Was she feeling guilty about what was happening? Various questions formed in his mind, and he realised that he didn't know her well enough to unravel what was meant by her message. After all, it was less than three weeks since they had first kissed one another, and that was just a mere speck in the vastness of time. He extracted his phone from his pocket and typed in a message. Hope you are feeling better, kiss, kiss, kiss. He waited. There you are. I was worried I'd put you off me. No, of course not. Sorry, I was away from my phone. It was strange. I was at a level crossing, and then I just felt this massive downer. I needed you to make me feel better. You are the only one that does. You get me. Well, I will make you feel better shortly. I'm not sure I will have time to come to yours before the dinner. I may have to change at work. Damn, thought Wynne. She had changed her mind. Say it ain't so. Put your foot down and I'll have a brew waiting for you. He waited, hoping that she still wanted to come and see him. He did not want to suffer any kind of setback, not this early, not when they were in the formative stage of their beginning. OK, make sure it's milky. Excellent. She remained interested. Will do, replied Wynne. He saw her car appear as he watched from the height of his bedroom window. He ran downstairs and into his kitchen to flick on the kettle again. He had boiled it already, so it would only need a few seconds to reheat. He had a cup and a tea bag already prepared. He left the kettle boiling and stood on the threshold of his front door. She parked in one of the bays and strode across, carrying a dress under a cover and a bag. Hello, I made it, she smiled and kissed Wynne. So you did. Up you go. I shall bring you your tea. He watched her ascend the stairs and then attended to her cup of tea. Wynne walked up the second flight of stairs, keeping a careful eye on the cup so as to avoid spilling its contents. He entered the bedroom to find Ashley stood in just her underwear, having already removed her skirt and blouse. He set the cup down on a cabinet and stared. He had, of course, already seen many pictures of her in lingerie and naked, but those were just pictures. She stood in front of him, displaying no coyness at her first near-naked presentation before him. Wynne stepped forward and kissed Ashley, his hands sliding around to grip her back. She kissed him forcibly, as he gently raked his nails against her skin. He let one hand come around and grip her left breast, squeezing it, making for her nipple as it hardened to his touch. They continued to kiss, and he maintained his grip on her bra-covered breast until he reached inside and prized it free. She gave a gasp 
as he allowed her firm breast to fill his hand, and his fingers gently played about her nipple. Their mouths fought, neither wishing to be submissive to the other, as he felt his own arousal increase below. He spun her around, and began to kiss her neck and shoulders, as she continued to make noises indicating her pleasure. She moved towards one of the scarlet-painted walls of his bedroom, and she placed both hands against the wall, thrusting her backside out towards him. He moved to the side of her, biting her neck and roughly groping her breasts. She groaned, but remained in position, as if she was waiting to be searched. He reached inside her flimsy, lime-green knickers, and let his middle finger move downwards until he found her warm and yielding pussy. She let out a short cry as his finger slid inside her and began to slowly move back and forth. He curled the end of his finger, seeking to find the slight roughness inside her that indicated where he might find her G-spot. She responded, and her legs buckled as she pushed down onto him. He eased a second finger into her. It was easy enough, as she was very wet. God, yes, I love it, she murmured, and shook her head, blonde curls swaying. Wynne continued to massage her, her pants still on, and then he yanked his hand free. She spun around, her eyes blazing in an accusatory fashion. He grinned and held up his fingers that glistened with her juice. He opened his mouth and slid them in, maintaining eye contact with her, as he licked her essence from his fingers. Once done, he removed his fingers. Delicious. You taste good, he remarked. Why have you stopped? That was glorious, she demanded. Wynne jerked his head towards the clock on the wall. You'll be late if I carry on. I'm not rushing taking you to bed. You deserve more than that. Ashley's mouth twisted in delight at his comment. She reached out and grabbed his groin, squeezing his hardness and kissed him hard on the mouth. Can't wait, she said, and then headed to the ensuite bathroom. Wynne heard the shower start to flow as he picked up her skirt and blouse, folding them neatly and placing them to one side. She had hung her dress, an elegant bronze item with spaghetti straps, on the back of his door. The garment looked expensive. After a few minutes, Ashley emerged from the bathroom, toweling herself. He was able to watch and see her naked fully for the first time. Her skin was pale and freckled, her limbs thin. There was no fat on her at all. He noticed her legs bore a couple of bruises and a scar below the knee, something that had been hidden by her skirts and dresses, but he said nothing. He continued to watch as she finished drying herself and turned to face him. Her pink nipples remained erect and a slight strip of almost downy blonde hair ran above her pussy. She was in good shape, having had two children and reached forty. The only item which gave away her age was her hands. They were rather scrawny and the skin seemed dry, the veins prominent. "'I know, I know,' she remarked as she stood in front of him still. "'I've had two children. What can I do?' "'On the contrary,' replied Wynne. I was just thinking how good you looked. You think so? She answered, turning, and looking over her shoulder at her bottom. I would like my bottom to be a bit higher. I think it's sagging. So you keep saying, but I don't see any of it. I like my tummy, though, nice and flat, she added, running her hands across it. Indeed it is. I will have to show you the picture of me in my bikini I have at home. He's on it, but just ignore that. You can see my six-pack. I love that photograph. Impressive. She pulled fresh underwear from her bag, placing the white lacy knickers on, but did not bother with the bra. She slid the dress over her head and wriggled it into place. Very elegant, remarked Wynne, as he continued to watch from his seat on the bed. Just need to do my hair and then touch up my makeup, and I'll be ready. You okay to drive me in still? By all means. Good. She pulled a hair dryer from a large bag and applied some mousse to her wet hair before setting about drying it. Wynne watched as she leant over, her slender frame bent, 
and he pictured lifting the dress and taking her there and then. She was certainly not shy about standing fully naked before him. She exhibited no desire to wrap her bath sheet about her before changing into her outfit, away from his gaze. Despite her protestations about her body, it was clear she thought highly of it, and was quite content to put it on display for him. This augured well for later that evening. He waited until she had completed her hair, and then she took her tussled mane. "'Enjoy watching?' she asked as she strode back into his bathroom and picked up his shaving mirror. "'It's good to watch you moving about my room. Well, gliding, actually. You seem to glide when you walk. Nobody's ever said that about me before. I like that.' Ashley walked over to the front window and balanced the mirror on the sill before taking up her makeup bag and applying makeup around her eyes. "'How am I for time?' she asked. "'It's ten to six. Okay, we have to be there for around six. It's quite an early start, although the guests don't arrive until 6.30. When do you think you'll be finished? Well, the do goes on until after midnight, but the main part will be done and dusted by 9.30. So I'll leave about ten on the basis of the fact that I'm driving. My clients will be getting pissed by then, so they won't mind. Who have you invited? Oh, all men, as you'd expect, she answered. Anybody I know? I don't think so. Ashley reeled off three names, but they were meaningless to win. There. How do I look? she asked, turning from the window. Magnificent, answered Wynne. She smiled. I'm rather nervous. You'll be fine. That's all right for Mr. Confident there. They are your clients, so at least you don't have to try too hard. I know, but I always feel on edge, and it's even worse, as I can only have a couple of glasses of wine. You should have got a cab. It's a bit pricey to the village, and I don't really like travelling on my own that far. Nobody else from the firm lives out that way. Ah, well, that's the advantage I have of being in the city, just ten minutes from here to the office and plenty of lifts available if I want them. Hence why you are such a pisshead, then, she replied. Very funny. Wynne lifted his phone to take a picture of Ashley as she stood in her dress. No, don't, she said, lifting her hand. Why not? You look great. Just don't, please. Why? I don't know what you'll do with it, will I? Look at it, in the main. It's just for me, said Wynne, a little wounded. Maybe next time, yes? If you like, he said, and replaced the phone in his suit. Come on, then. Time to drop you off. <laughs>